Cesium is probably best known for its high reactivity and low melting point of only 28.5 degrees Celsius. It was first discovered in 1860 by two German scientists, Robert Bunsen and Gustav Kirchhoff. It has an atomic number of 55 and has only one natural isotope, cesium-133, which is stable. Cesium-137, on the other hand, is radioactive and it is produced by a nuclear fission of uranium-235 and it is commonly found in nuclear waste and fallout. It has a medium-short half-life of 30.1 years and a single gram has an activity of 3.2 terabecquerels. Since cesium-147 is one of the main radioactive elements found in nuclear fallout, it is very often used as a calibration source for radiation detectors. It also has many applications in medical industry, where it can be used in radiotherapy to fight cancer or to sterilize medical equipment. It can also be found in thickness gauges, flow meters, and gamma ray while logging devices. Since cesium-147 wasn't produced before 1945, it can be used to date wine and detect counterfeits. Cesium-147 is one of the most dangerous isotopes found in nuclear fallout because of its strong gamma rays. But unlike strontium-90, if ingested, it is distributed around the body more or less evenly and it has a short biological half-life of 70 days. Cesium-147 is a beta and a gamma emitter. In 94% of the cases, it emits a beta particle turning into metastable barium-147, which then emits a gamma ray at 662 keV before becoming stable. In the remaining 6% of the cases, cesium-147 decays directly into stable barium-147 by a beta emission. Cesium-147 has a very characteristic gamma spectrum, with two large peaks at 41 keV and 662 keV, which makes it a very popular calibration source for gamma spectrometers. As of right now, I got two samples of cesium-147. The first one is a TG-36 spark gap tube produced by CP Claire. According to the date code, it was produced in the September of 1985 and it originally contained one microcurie of cesium-147. Today, the activity dropped to about 0.43 microcurie, but it is still detectable, and it measures just over 1 microsievert an hour on my racist gamma spectrometer, and about 450 cpm on my Ludlum Model 3 with a pancake probe at 1 cm distance. My other source is made from ashes of Belarusian mushrooms, which contain fallout from Chernobyl. They clock at almost 250 cpm on my Ludlum, but when measured in a lead castle with my racid, the activity increased only by 6.5 cps. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. Also feel free to check out my coffee page where you can donate a nice cup of radioactive coffee. And remember, stay active!